closed captioning of this program is made possible by the Fireman's Fund Foundation. A co-production of KQED and the Center for Investigative Reporting in association with Frontline. California's booming medical marijuana industry. Is it out of control? It's illegal. There's no question about it. I've said that over and over. We're not a bunch of Cheech and Chong law enforcement officers that are encouraging people to grow marijuana. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Have we become a republic of cannabis? Good evening, I'm Scott Schaefer. Welcome to this special co-production of KQED and the Center for Investigative Reporting. Well, it's been 15 years since California voters legalized marijuana for medical use with the passage of Proposition 215. Since then, the state has become a top producer. Growing and distributing pot has become big business. And yet, the federal government says it's illegal. California's medical marijuana program is increasingly in conflict with federal law. The cannabis industry and local law enforcement are caught in the middle. Michael Montgomery starts our coverage with this report from Mendocino County. Each summer for the past 30 years, choppers have taken to the skies over the hills and forests of Northern California. Their target, illegal marijuana cultivation. But every year, the challenge for law enforcement becomes bigger. The climate here is perfect for marijuana, but it's not just the weather. California was the first state to legalize medical marijuana use, and in the 15 years since, production has boomed. We see a lot of out-of-state license plates, Nevada, Oregon, Washington, people coming here to grow. Um, and they'll buy a piece of land, strip the land bare, and grow as much as they can, and try to get away with it too, and they'll do it under the guise of uh, medical marijuana. This plant could fetch one to $2,000 per pound in California, but the price doubles if it's shipped out of state. There's plots like this all the way up for half a mile. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Across California last year, agents destroyed seven million plants. And of all the counties in Northern California, Mendocino led the way. But Sheriff Tom Allman says his agent sees only a fraction of the pot that's grown here. We have not been winning any kind of strategy against marijuana. I'm not calling it the war on drugs. I'm not calling that. Any strategy that we've been using, and I've been in this business for a long time, it hasn't worked. Almond grew up in Northern California when hippies were beginning to grow pot. And as a young sheriff's deputy, he watched as the war on drugs drove growers You're deep set. underground. Okay. Thank you. But it did little to stop the trade. To Almond, medical marijuana, ushered in through a loosely written ballot measure, has only made it easier for illegal growers to find cover. My head hurts after hitting it on a brick wall for a while, and I decided to quit hitting my head on the brick wall. So Ullman is trying something that's never been done anywhere in California, and he's assigned Deputy Randy Johnson to be his point man. Well, it's new territory. It's none of us have ever done anything like this. It's not even all the way legal. I mean, it's legal in our county. Johnson took us along on a visit to local organic farmer Matthew Cohen. Good morning. Cohen grows medical marijuana for Bay Area customers, right. and he was one of the first to sign up for Mendocino's program. The goal is to eliminate the gray areas of state law. As a registered grower, Cohen is allowed up to 99 plants on his farm, and Deputy Johnson is here to count them. Okay. Yeah, this one might be reachable here. These zip ties mark the plant as legal. This is Mendocino County Sheriff on it's upside down though. Growers pay fifty dollars for each zip tie. The money is channeled back into the sheriff's budget to go after illegal growers. By joining the program, growers trade big black market profits for the safety of no longer having to operate in the shadows. Didn't have any problems with your security? No, it's been going, it's been working good. Some people are watching this right now shaking their heads, saying, I can't believe there's a cop in uniform that's working with marijuana people. We're not a bunch of Cheech and Chong law enforcement officers that are encouraging people to grow marijuana. Nothing could be farther from the truth. The idea is for us to create a paper trail that's auditable so that it's a d deterrent for growers to want to, uh, you know, pull some out the back door, as well as have some sort of documentation to build a case against them if, if in fact they had. So it sounds like the biggest threat here is diversion, pot going into the illegal market. 
it's the number one fear for us with the program because we don't want some you know DEA raid to happen where they had busted some guy with a hundred pounds in Nevada driving east. Diversion is a real problem. As much as 70 percent of the pot grown in California is exported to other states. So Cohen and Johnson are working to develop a system that keeps track of every ounce of marijuana to make sure it ends up in legitimate hands. It goes all the way down. Still, some of Johnson's fellow sheriff's deputies don't look so favorably on his new role as the advice guy for growers. Well, you go higher if you use a step ladder or something. You go. You could probably get three levels if you use cable. You can make it tight. The program has drawn attention from around the country. But in the eyes of the federal government, Mendocino may have gone too far. Tommy Lanier helps coordinate marijuana strategy for the Office of National Drug Control Policy in the White House. Very simple on the federal government. It's illegal. There's no question about it. I've said that over and over. It's, there's, it's, it's illegal. Sheriff Oman says, I'm just upholding the law of the state of California. Well. I disagree with it's the law of the state of California. I believe what it is is that the county has implemented something outside the scope of the state. But you need to be extremely careful when you enact laws that are in violation of the federal statutes because it won't fly. If we serve nine Bay Area counties. Some growers in the Mendocino program, like Cohen, are already facing legal challenges on the local level. While the law allows him to grow in Mendocino and distribute in other counties, there is no legal way to transport the pot in between. Um, well, basically, I'm the boss, and i got to make this run because our two guys got nailed two days in a row last week, so I'm making the run. When two of his delivery men got pulled over in Sonoma, they were arrested for transporting illegal narcotics. As Cohen heads south with several pounds of medical marijuana in his trunk, he knows he's taking a risk and he makes a last-minute call to his business manager. Of course, you know, everybody, if it's the feds, don't need to talk to anybody and know you, you know, you choose to remain silent, I want to speak to my lawyer, and if it's the locals, then, you know, they're our pals and do whatever they, they ask of us. I'm just going to set the cruise at 65. We'll see if we can pull over. <laughs> The irony is that most of the cannabis driving down this road is probably going out of state. <laughs> On this day, Cohen wasn't stopped, but the local DA has refused to drop charges against his drivers. Back in Mendocino, County Supervisor John McCowan says these legal challenges ignore the benefits of the program. Back when marijuana production started to take off in Mendocino County, a lot of growers did everything they could to be under the radar. They didn't want to register to vote because they could get called for jury duty. They, they just wanted to try and be invisible. Uh, parents teaching their children, you can't talk to the police officer because they're not your friend. And so there was a lot of paranoia, suspicion, and we're starting to see that change. Growers and the general community are really coming back together. Outside Mendocino, growers are looking to the county as a model. Yeah, this, this sound that we're hearing, this noise, this is the noise of an industry here. Joey Berger lives in Humboldt County, where he's helping scale up production with new machines. Yeah, the, the Twister is the leading cannabis trimming machine on the market today. It can turn uh, uh, the workforce of five into the workforce of 30 or more. Berger says many growers he does business with will come out of the shadows if there's a clear legal framework. This, this plant is what's supporting this community, what's allowing these farmers to live here, and, uh, and they want to fight and ensure that their livelihood is protected through ordinances, through regulations, through working with uh, our local policymakers. And they're going to do all they can to ensure that they can keep feeding their families. During last fall's harvest, growers were hopeful that other cities and counties around California would follow Mendocino's lead. But earlier this year, the Justice Department struck back. Starting with Oakland, which wanted to license industrial pot farms, the feds warned they could hold elected officials personally liable for violating the Controlled Substances Act. I think what the U.S. attorneys have done is an extremely great way to send a message to everybody that this is the position of the Department of Justice. And it doesn't matter if you're in California, Oregon, Washington, Michigan, this is the standard. That means Mendocino could be a target. So Ullman is closely following the Justice Department warnings to local officials around the country. 
there's two state employees in Washington that could be prosecuted. There's Justice Department spokeswoman said we will not tolerate drug traffickers who hide behind claims of compliance with state law to mask activities that are clearly illegal. Well, that's what we say also. But what if the feds say regardless what you're doing here is in violation of federal law? Then I guess we're going to uh, have that discussion about states' rights. And, you know, the old question that, that you and I have talked about before, what was the cause of the Civil War? It surely wasn't slavery. It was states' rights. And I'm not saying that marijuana is going to cause a civil war because it won't. But marijuana could easily be the proving ground of states' rights on this issue. Mendocino's legal struggles over licensing marijuana production cut to the heart of America's pot problem. How can a drug that the U.S. government says is dangerous and illegal also be embraced as medicine by a state, county, or city? Is more suppression the answer, or should marijuana be regulated, like alcohol and tobacco? And joining me now are Tom Allman, Mendocino County Sheriff, Joe Rossinello, former U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of California, Tamar Todd, attorney with the Drug Policy Alliance, and Michael Montgomery, reporter for KQED and the Center for Investigative Reporting. Michael, you've been covering this topic for a year or longer. What is this legal tightrope that Mendocino County is trying to, to walk? What does it tell you about Prop 215 and California's medical marijuana policy and how well it's working? Well, it says there's a lot of confusion. Uh, you know, it's interesting, when we started this project last year, there was a sense that, you know, California was on the cusp of something new. Uh, there was a drive for legalizing uh, recreational use. The industry was coming out of the shadows, as we see in some of this footage. And then it kind of stopped. And you realize that you have this huge industry that can't quite get out of the shadows because there's really no regulatory framework. And there's this legal debate between the federal government and the states and others about whether marijuana is legal or can ever be legal. And so the growers feel that conflict as well, obviously. The growers definitely feel a, a certain degree of uncertainty. They're very excited in Mendocino. Some of them are about this program, but they're very much aware of uh, what's happening elsewhere. Joe Rossinello, former U.S. attorney who served under, I think, four administrations, including the Obama administration. Is what Mendocino County is doing legal? No, absolutely not. And um, there is no question that it violates the uh, Controlled Substance Act and probably doesn't even comply with the state attorney general's guidelines on, um, uh, on what kind of a cooperative or organization would be permitted to um, to grow marijuana. What about the sheriff's point that this is really a state's right issue, that California has the right to... Issues uh, decided. Uh, the Supreme Court's already decided in the Rage case that uh, the um, federal law is, um, is supreme preempts, and not to get too complicated about it, it's pretty clear that the that the federal uh, standards are the ones that uh, need to be uh, need to be uh, followed here. Well, it, it, so is a, it, it is a fact, though, that in terms of uh, reality and priority, the uh, guidelines that have been put out by the Department of Justice that have now been followed r routinely and I think will be for the future recognize that there are some situations in which there are honest um, people who. Uh, fervently believe that they get some efficacy from using marijuana and that their caregivers uh, can uh, help them uh, with this, but that's a very small group of people and a very discreet uh, circumstance. Sheriff Allman, how concerned are you about being prosecuted? Well, I, I think there's so much ambiguity in Proposition 215, and, and as uh, Joe said, I, I'm not going to disagree with a lot of what Joe said, but um, how concerned I am? Am I to be prosecuted? I, I'm not concerned. I, I think that um, as far as the Attorney General guidelines go, when the Mendocino County Board of Supervisors uh, investigated and passed what we refer to as County Ordinance 9.31, they put a great deal of thought into, at then, that time, Attorney General Brown, now Governor Brown's guidelines. And the new Attorney General is soon to release her own uh, amended guidelines, which I think will comply with what we're doing. And why do you think growers sign up to be a part of this program that you're trying? Well, I, I you have to re realize there's a small percentage of growers that sign up. This, the vast majority of Mendocino County marijuana is still grown illegally. It's not grown with any cooperative. It's not grown with any kind of medical recommendation behind it. The vast majority is illegal commercial marijuana that the sheriff's office is going after. 
But to answer your question, I, I use two words. I use voluntary compliance. I truly believe that the average citizen wants to comply with the law. And what Mendocino County has done is said, all right, if you want to comply with medical marijuana, these are the guidelines you can have to have, such as you have to have five acres, you have to have a six foot fence with a lockable gate. It can't be visible from a roadway or in any kind of public location. There, it's not just a simple go out and grow. We, we charge the growers for our sergeant to go out and do inspections. It costs them about $500 a month to have us go there. Yeah, Tamar Todd, uh, your group uh, supported Prop 215 when it was on the ballot 15 years ago now. How well do you think it's working? Is this what you envisioned or what people who supported it back then envisioned, do you think? Well, I think, you know, it was a novel experiment that hadn't been done before. And um, I think the federal law issue is important. It's important to recognize that the medical marijuana movement, Prop 215, and the form that it takes is a result of the federal government's policy on marijuana um, and its refusal to recognize the scientific literature out there and reschedule it from Schedule 1. But isn't it also the fact that Prop 215 was a little loosey-goosey? Yes, it's loosely written, but the reason why it's loosely written is because it was unclear under the threat of federal law and federal law enforcement um, how much regulation the state could have, and that's a question we're still grappling with. Um, it's simplistic to just say it's illegal under federal law, therefore that's the end of it and that's the problem. Um, the reality and what the Supreme Court said in Raich is that um, federal law and state law are separate, and state the state is fully within its right to legalize any conduct it wants, including medical marijuana marijuana, and the federal government can still enforce its own laws. Um, but, yeah, there's ahead, one last point, out. but the reality is is that overwhelmingly 99% probably of marijuana arrests are made on the state and local level. So its impact is significant if the state departs from federal policy that the federal, doesn't, federal government doesn't have the um, political will or even the ability to really enforce marijuana law in California. Michael Montgomery, uh, we've seen how state, county, federal officials are at loggerheads over this, but there is an area of agreement, which is that marijuana should not be grown in, on public land. Uh, and I know that you recently went to, to a training uh, of uh, some of the federal and state officials. Uh, tell us about that, and I think we have some tape of it as well. Absolutely. Well, Mendocino, as Sheriff Allman has said, is, is, is gearing up for a very large operation this summer to focus on illegal growing in the uh, Mendocino National Forest. It's probably going to be the biggest series of raids that have ever happened up there. And there is agreement that uh, that is, you know, there's really not much of a debate about the legality of that. It's clearly illegal, and there's a, a concern about growing violence up there, about uh, uh, groups coming in from outside the country, Mexican groups moving in and, and taking over the trade. So we're going we're gonna to see a lot of action up well, there this summer. it's not just a fear. They're here. They've been here for uh, at least uh, five or six years, I mean, growing on public lands. And uh, it, 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 it's kind of uh, uh, indicative of how much money can be made uh, in, this, in this particular area and why Prop 215, in the view of many, and a lot, lots of people in law enforcement, was just the, the camel's nose under the tent. It was a pretext for being able to get to recreational marijuana, the, the initiative that was on the ballot last year. Uh, all of a sudden, thousands of people discovered that they, they, they really couldn't get through the day unless they had medical yeah. marijuana, and uh, that was just a sham. And, Sheriff Allman, to what extent do you think Prop 215 uh, has exacerbated the problem on public lands? It, it's horrible. It, if you asked the average citizen walking down the street, is marijuana legal in California medically, the answer, they'd say yes. That's not the truth. Medical marijuana, Prop 215, clearly states it's an affirmative defense. But because a society has just assumed it's legal at s almost all levels, there's many people who are assuming that public lands can be used to grow marijuana. You think it's, so you think it's like a naive thing or is it really more organized? I mean, they must know what the law is. It's both. There, there's definitely organized crime, but there's definitely people who think that, well, it's that we well, can go there and do whatever. Last year, Scott, we arrested people from 14 different countries and from 30 different states. Well, they come here because the publicity is Growing marijuana is legal, and it's not. Tamar, to what extent are other states doing something different from California well, that may be working better? Yeah, there are other states doing things differently, and I think this whole thing underlines the argument and the need for regulation, which Tom's pro 
program is an innovative approach to trying to provide some regulation in California. Other states have looked at California and seen um, that the jurisdictions that got out ahead and provided some sort of structure and regulation and licensing um, of dispensaries and providers um, were more successful. And so a number of other states have medical marijuana programs where all the production and distribution is licensed by the state, inspected, the marijuana is tracked, um, there's quality controls, which s helps law enforcement, the community, and patients. Well, that would never happen here. Well, we have hydroponic. Yeah. We have we we have these facilities in the western part of San Francisco, yeah. uh, Daly City, Pacifica, by the dozens that law enforcement's unable to deal with. And the reason they're there is because there's so much money, and they're not yeah. going to they're not going to get licensed. Uh, there, there, there's going to be so much more supply than there'd ever be yeah. the demand. Well, unfortunately, for this. the federal government is threatening the licensing and regulation in other states. So, for example, Washington State, which has medical marijuana through voter, voter initiative for over 10 years and has some similar problems to California, their governor vetoed legislation to bring the whole industry under regulation after receiving a letter from the U.S. Well, attorney. Well, because I think the, they're not going to be satisfied with, with a doctor saying, without any examination of the patient or any review of medical records, that he thinks that person can benefit. Yeah. Uh, from uh, medical marijuana if that's going to be the basis for somebody uh, claiming to but be a uh, patient. If we bring it back to compassionate use, Michael, what effect is all this having on people who legitimately use it on you know, access and that kind of thing? Well, I suppose that's a success story of 215, of Prop 215. It is very easy uh, for people, legitimate patients and others, to get medical marijuana. Uh, there's, there's a debate about how easy it is. Uh, the quality of marijuana has improved. Uh, there's, there's a success story, in a sense, with growth. However, that doesn't resolve all these legal questions and all these ambiguities. The tetrahydrocannabinol is about 30 percent, which is like 15 times more than it was in the reefer madness days or, or, well, or the 1970s. An for this is not good. So that this patients is not good. Know this is bad. Quickly, no, it's right. an yes, argument sure. for regulation, so yeah. that patients know. Sure, Sheriff Allman, are, are, in a certain sense, aren't you trying to have it both ways? You're participating in these federal raids. You're getting training for those things, and yet at the same time, you're working with the growers. I mean, can, can you have it? Can you be on both sides of the law? I think you can. We do it with alcohol. It, the, in many ways, it's illegal for someone to make huge amounts of alcohol at their house. And if they do, ATF's going to come and arrest them. But is anybody really doing do that these days? Do you have stills in uh, Mendocino? We have no stills that I know of in Mendocino <laughs> County. But let's use alcohol for the example and say, if you abuse the, the right to have a small amount of alcohol, you're going to get arrested. And if you want to pay the taxes on it and go to a store and buy it, you have that right. But, but Scott, real quickly, part of 215's problem is, number one, is all 58 counties can do things different ways. So there's no consistency. And we're seeing the courts, the citizens, and the cops all confused of where we're supposed to go on this. And Michael, what would, what would resolve that? Is there something the state and or federal government could do to, to at least clarify the situation and allow people who really need medical marijuana to get it? I think there's a fundamental conflict here. I think that the, the uh, Controlled Substances Act is it's pretty clear. I don't think there's a lot of wiggle room there. I, I think that uh, it's clear that the federal government is not going to get in the way of individual patients or people accessing medical marijuana. But to build a real industry, which we have here in California, in the shadows, to bring that out of the shadows, Unless federal law changes, I think it's going to be yeah. very difficult. Well, I think there's going to be another level of confusion. You mentioned that the attorney general, the new attorney general, may be coming out with different guidelines. We're waiting. Yeah, yeah, and but this but could me, be even just, worse. But let me just bring it back. What, 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 what should the Department of Justice goal be? I mean, we're 40 years into the war on drugs, right? Are we really... Yeah, well, we, mis we, we mislabeled it a war. It was never fought as a war, but in any case, yeah. Yeah, so what's, what, what's a reasonable goal? A reasonable goal is to make sure that, that uh, those substances that are um, uh, harmful, and, and marijuana is a harmful substance, it's a, a scheduled one controlled substance, are kept out of the hands of uh, people who um, uh, could, uh, could be damaged by their use. And that's, that's the objective of the Controlled Substance Act of uh, 1970, and that will be the federal government's mission, I suspect, for, for Joe, uh, my years friend. to come. 14 states and the District of Columbia have accepted it one because way Because the they think that it's a panacea. It's a way for them to sort of square the circle. It's a way for them to gain revenue from an enterprise that, that seems to have a general uh, public consensus of support because you put medical in front of anything and the public thinks that somehow Well, we'll never have medical meth. You know, we won't. <laughs> well, 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 just let's not go there. Uh, it's prescribed by Dr. Cotton. Tamar, what, uh, what do you think is a reasonable policy? For, yeah. I mean, if I the think Fed just backed off, ago, I think 15 years ago, the reasonable answer was that um, 
the federal government could have rescheduled marijuana and it could be prescribed by a doctor and bought in a pharmacy. I think by keep putting their heads in the sand, um, that boat, the ship has sailed basically on that. Um, 215 is a voter initiative in California. It can only be changed through another voter initiative and it's still overwhelmingly popular. I mean, medical marijuana across the country, 75 to 80% approval and a number of other states too. At this point, I think they need to step back and allow states to go forward and regulate it and make it safe for patients, make it so the marijuana can be tracked, um, quality control, controls over production. Um, and there's actually a bill pending that Barney Franks and Ron Paul no jointly chance. introduced to, to, um, to, to basically base. take the yeah. feds out of the equation and no let chance. states move forward I, with. I Michael, with just really quickly, uh, what, what do we look for next, real quick? Well, we're expecting uh, perhaps some developments some on, uh, from the feds and, and perhaps some developments uh, from Justice Department in California as well. Okay. Well, thank you all very much. I don't know if we, uh, if we resolved anything, but maybe we've clarified some things. There's more, by the way, on our series at kqed.org slash Republic of Cannabis. Explore the history of marijuana policy in the U.S. with POT 101. It's an interactive timeline. You can also watch exclusive video reports and much more. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Scott Schaefer. Good night. a co-production of KQED and the Center for Investigative Reporting in association with Frontline.